First video of 2021, Happy New Year to everyone. If you wanna learn how to accomplish the following, keep watching to see this and our bonus logic of filtering and exporting at the end. Our daily video uses classes and methods within Tkinter connecting our graphical user interface to an SQLite database. Data Linux Ireland will add links to the code and the description below on what SQL is needed to create the video's database. It is great to have you stopping by. Our channel is growing with each new video release. Remember to subscribe and hit the alert button. Right, so there are four areas, main areas we're going to cover. Create, read, update and delete. They're commonly known as crude in computer programming. We'll now step through each one. I'll focus on the main code of how this works, but there is also the code for creating the graphical user interface. So, um, as you've seen earlier on in the introduction, we would have basically had um, a screen with a submit button. And the idea behind the submit button is to basically take the data that the actual user uh, picked and submit it to the database. The database is here. See it's in the background. Um, it's got two databases. It's got post type and ledger posting. So post type is some of the metadata around um, the types of information that can be retrieved from the combo box and submitted back into the table into ledger posting, okay? And ledger posting is the actual data that's submitted, updated or deleted, uh, which you'll see further on as we work through this video, what happens. So this is the table ultimately that gets updated, okay? So when we go back in here, now there's a lot in this, so my main focus is to go through the more the updates and how they happen. I'll quickly go down through this. Um, so obviously we've got a class main window, and this class is basically managing the main window with all the buttons, um, trees, and uh, functionality around updating and deleting and exporting. Okay. So this creates basically the, the, the basically the main window, creates the buttons. This section of the code here takes you through getting the data from the database and basically then it populates it into a tree that's in a frame. Okay. And basically we've added in some scroll bars and then some labels and some texts and the submit button. So this next bit we're going to focus on we'll go further down now in two seconds is actually this these these two lines here. So there's a button submit. Um, as I said you should see it on the, the screen we showed. And Basically, um, when this button submits, it runs a number of checks. Um, basically, will then, once those checks are validated, take the data that was returned by the user and submit the database and just provide an update. Okay, so let's go down to that code, um, which is just down here. So, really, the main part of this is when the, the window um, is created. What it has to do first is to load in um, data. To populate the combo box all right so the combo box which basically allows the user if we go back here to basically go in and pick any one of these values here from the database okay so credit sale purchase whatever uh, based on that then it basically will uh, loop through and then pick these corresponding values whether it's ledger type number or debit or credit the only value that the user will put in in this uh, video is for purposes is just a limit. Okay, so if we go back here, this is the, the code then that goes off, goes into the database, gets the data, and then basically runs a loop here. And the loop is basically going in, fetching all the data. And what it's doing is is, is appending it to these. So these are empty lists. It's appending to these to empty lists temporarily. Um, a bit more work to do on it. Once it's in those lists, it basically then the next main, this main bit of code is actually taking all those lists and actually creating them into a dictionaries. And the reason behind the dictionaries is what you have is key, key value pairs. And that allows you then uh, to match up the key value pairs then in the next section uh, on the combo change, um, on the combo change uh, method. So the combo change method what it's doing down here 
Let's cover change method is taking these dictionaries here. Okay, so you see self posting type this should be all down here. Okay, we have basically returned these values here from this method. We populate them in here. And basically what this logic here is doing is looking at each value um, and then based on the change in the value of the combo box, it's updating the values uh, on these particular um, text boxes. And then basically once those values in the text boxes and we have the user's um, selection, it basically then goes on to the button submit. So the final step then is uh, the button submitted here, okay? Uh, what it's doing is it's basically going off and it's looking at the values that are in this text box and then the values up here. So you have text here, submit number, and you basically have this number here is equal to whatever value was put into here. As you can see, the .get method is being used. What that is doing is the same. It's literally looking into that text box and saying, what is the value that the user has entered in there? And that's how you would return a value entered by a user or submitted by a user that will be submitted to the database. So as you can see, I've done that there for these three, okay? So I've done it for the LT number, which is the type number, the amount, and whether it's a debit or credit, okay? Final thing I've done here at this step is to look at today, uh, today's date. Uh, basically what it's these two lines here are basically doing is getting the day's date and this will be used with this information to basically uh, submit it to the database. So the next step then in this logic is to say, right, we're ready to go and save the database. We need to do a couple of checks. And this line here is basically looking at the values that are entered and making sure that they're not empty. Um, if, if they are empty, it just returns this message. If it's not, then it just basically goes and runs this code. And this code basically again goes back, uh, connects to the database, basically goes and runs and execute and inserts those values that have been returned by the user, and basically submits it to the database. Um, so this here is the bit in this sec section of the code, which basically goes and commits it to the database. Very important as well, this line here, uh, self.com.close, that you basically close the database, and that's for security reasons. So very important um, that in any code you write when you're doing inserts in the database, that you actually close the connection. Um, then it just basically says here, the last step is data is save as a message box. Um, two things here it does is it runs two last methods here. It basically clears out what was entered by the user. Um, and the logic behind that is if you just don't want to double enter it and duplicate it. And then it just basically last step here is refresh tree. So basically this line here runs this method here. And then this line here runs this method, okay? So that's the steps really that are involved um, for this particular application that I've, I've loaded up on video for how you would load a set of data, loop through it, and then get what the user has um, chosen um, through loops and through the combo box. Uh, uh, again, uh, the update record, uh, once the button is clicked, delete update delete record button is clicked, uh, it opens with a new pop-up screen window and that will only work and populate based on you highlighting a, a value um, on the main tree window. So if you don't highlight a value in the main tree window, it will just come up empty, okay? So again, this code like the first step is basically taking you through the creation of the window, the labels, the text fields, values, and properties around that. Um, it takes you through populating in a number of values, etc., and recording values that you need. Okay, so the main area that we want to focus on is here. Um, basically, what this is doing is uh, you can only on that particular if you want to if you've highlighted a row and you want to update a rec. Uh, the amount and that so that's the only one that allowed um, in this video to be updated obviously there's more you could do you could add in additional logic and be sure that I, I've included the I'd link to the logic um, in the description so if you're looking for that logic you can see it down there so if you want to update the amount um, again all it's doing is it's basically uh, once the button is clicked um, on that pop-up screen to save the changes 
it's going here, coming here. It's basically connecting into the database. And this is the, these two lines are probably the, the most important bits. What they're doing is they're doing an update statement into the ledger posting. Um, basically saying set, set the amount, whatever the value was entered by the user, based on the row ID. Um, and basically then it's pulling information from text amount get. So again, we've used this get here, like we, I showed you in step one. It's basically pulling the value from the text amount box, which is the box on the pop-up window. And then from the tree also, it's getting the row ID. So you know for certain that the proper row ID based on what the values populated into the pop-up is going to be submitted to the database and updated. So again, that's that. It basically, this very important line commits, this is what updates the database. And like I said before in step one, this is basically closing the connection to the database. You're finished, you don't need it to be open, and it's very important for security reasons. It will then obviously pop you up a box uh, message here, and just basically tell you that the database was uh, updated, and I'll give you the details of the row, and the, um, I think it's the amount, yeah, the amount. And it gets those amounts again from the information on the pop-up. And the last thing it does is, and you'll see this in the intro um, base, it shows you that it refresh the screen, but when the screen refreshes, it basically reruns this refresh, refresh tree method, uh, repopulates in the updated value from the database. So the value you changed now is actually the new value. It appears on the screen and the old value is gone. So that's how you would go about updating the database. So remember it's steps are, Click the button, um, opens up a pop-up window. Pop-up window then, um, if, well, sorry, before you click the pop-up window, it, you need to make sure that you've clicked the line you want to edit, and then it clicks in the pop-up window. And then you just basically go and change the amount, click Save Changes, uh, Save Changes, then just basically runs this update database method, pulls all the values from the screen through the text boxes, and it gets them through this get method inserts into the database, saves, uh, connect, close the connection, and then gives you this message box. So that's a very, very quick way to actually um, update the database in the database table. Uh, obviously, as I said, we've only um, included the amounts. There is, you could expand this code to include other fields on that database and on the user, user interface to be updated. All right, so the next step um, we're gonna look at is deleting. See you in a second. Right, so we would have taken you just in the previous step um, updating the database and how to go about doing that and the basic creation of the windows and the text boxes, labels, so on and so forth. Again, because this is working through the same window, it's pretty much the same um, steps as uh, the update. The only difference is the code in, for a deletion is a little bit different. So up here, when we were doing the updates, uh, we basically had we had the values that were selected by the user. Basically, they were the ones that were updated into the database that was updated. Difference here now is that when we want to delete, we have a delete statement. So again, it's quite similar. Um, goes through the same steps. The only difference really between the update and the delete is the SQL um, delete functionality. As you can see here, again, we're deleting from the ledger posting and we're taking the row ID and the amount, but we're also taking the ledger type and the uh, ledger type number and the actual ledger type. So we're taking all the values from the screen and we're making sure that they, they are the ones that are on the database and that's the one that's deleted. Up here on the update, we are only really updating the set amount, the amount and the row ID. Here, we're taking all the values to make sure that they all match up and that there's um, the correct record is updated. So like the previous steps, um, connection com commit is basically what um, updates, goes into the database, does the updates of the deletion. Um, again, for security reasons, closing. So that's how you would close it. We just basically show a message box and then what we do is do a refresh and after we do the refresh the deleted record will no longer appear on the 
appear on the database and will not um, appear on your output. So that's how you would actually very quickly go and delete a record. Okay, so let's move on to the next step then. Thank you. Right, so on our main window when it popped the layout up, we have a button that allows you to filter your data. So the objective behind this is um, basically if you have lots and lots of entries, you want to be able to go off and not go through all the entries, but basically filter it on criteria. So what we've done in this video, just for illustrative purposes, is to filter it on ledger number, but you could obviously do the same on date or any other value um, that you want to use, okay? So again, when you go to fil click the filter data button, it creates a new pop-up window, okay? And this basically method here oh, uh, creates um, the actual window with the labels and buttons, okay? So we have a number of labels and then we have apply filter, uh, close, etc., etc. okay? Right, so what we're basically doing is, um, first step is when somebody enters a value, what these lines are doing is it's getting the value and it's going off comparing it to a self.ledger number list. And basically, you basically have a loop here that says for I in self.ledger number list, um, check this actually is it the valid value. So what you don't want the situation is um, don't mean to look up a value and basically that value doesn't exist. So this is just a purely a check to say that value exists and if it doesn't exist, it will basically tell you something. So all this is basically doing is getting the value, checking it, is it on the, the list of values on the database? And then if it is, return true, okay? Once that, if that's returned true, it basically, that value is passed here, okay? So it's basically saying here in this, the start of this here, is that um, if it's blank, then basically it says, it's just basically saying there's an empty value, you can't to use that. Um, but then this line says, if it's not blank, and this method returns true here, then go and run this code. So all it's doing is saying is that it's not blank, and the va value entered in the box is actually a valid value per the database. Then goes off on this code. So again, it connects the database, it basically goes off and executes this SQL, which pulls in all this data and basically populates it into a data frame, okay? Um, and then what it does is this line here is just populating um, in data frame, actually the row headers, okay? Got a frame holder again to populate the data in. I got a tree and it populates all the data in here. If none of this is possible, then it just uh, basically says here, it's an incorrect value. You need to go and put in a correct one. And it basically then leaves that window open. This last line basically is leaves the window open for you to put in a new end figure to try. Okay. And basically um, this is all part of when all this has been validated, this is part of the tree enters in it's part it's basically allows the trees to be shown in the data in the table um, and then it's the scroll bars okay so that's again how you would go about applying a filter so just to recap basically the um, filter data is run it basically looks at the value is the value in the database the value in the database it does yes goes off runs some sql and gets the sql based on the ledger number here, okay? So remember, here's this get again, we had it in previous steps, gets, gets that from the text box, goes into the database, pulls all the information pertaining to that and shows it in the tree. And what you can do is you can actually, you'll probably see it in, the, in this demo earlier on, um, you can actually change those values, it would clear the tree view out and then repopulate in with new values. So that's how you would go and filter a tree view in a frame in a TK interview. Okay, so we're now going to move on to the final steps of looking at the bonus piece of code of exporting the data. Okay, thanks. Right, so um, our final step um, of piece of logic we wanted to show you 
was where you have the data and you basically want to export it out into an Excel sheet. Okay, so if we look at this here quickly, this piece of functionality will take all the, the data that's on the database and that you would see on the screen and basically dump it out all into an Excel sheet like this. So let's go and have a look quickly how we've done this. I've done this previously before on other videos, which I'll link to in the description. So have a look there. It's a pretty um, straightforward uh, piece of code, but if you're not familiar with it, I'll just take you through the steps. So the first thing um, actually when you even want, before you even go to write the code is, is this piece here, you need to import um, these um, into your basically your Python logic. What this will do is it will bring in the functionality down that allows the bit steps down here to work and export to Excel. It's very important if you want to export anything to Excel, make sure this is in your code at the top, uh, part of the import statements. So essentially the button on the screen that we showed earlier on, uh, it was for exporting. Um, I didn't put any pop-up message on it, but uh, it does work and I'll check and validate it. All it does is again is go and runs this method. Like uh, the previous steps, um, it basically connects into the database. It basically selects everything, row ID and everything from the ledger posting uh, table. Dumps it into a data frame, adds the headers here, okay. And then what we do is we just create a variable called raw data and just say equal to the data frame. And then this is the step the bit that it basically um, exports to. So all it's doing here is it's basically saying raw raw data, this bit to Excel um, is part of this bit here. And basically once this is being imported and is part of the logic, it basically then knows to export this out to Excel. Um, this is raw, it's basically the raw data. Um, this is the, the file because you can change this. So this is on a OneDrive that I have. And um, so I'm doing this across the network just to kind of show you that it can be done. This sheet name, all it does is obviously on the file, when I open it up there, you would have seen the sheet that it's on, it's called export. Index is false. Um, important to have this here. This is links back up to here. And if you didn't put this in, it wouldn't work. Um, so important to put the engine which is basically telling you run this here and all the functionality around it that allows you to export it out into Excel. So that is very quickly how you would export your data and bring it out to Excel and then you can use it and do what you want with it. And obviously um, if, if you got it the way you wanted it, you could then um, basically bring it back in and put it into a different frame and do what you want with it. So there's a lot you can do with this. Okay, so that's the end of the video. That's how you would basically use Python tkinter to uh, basically create a uh, GUI interface, update records, uh, filter records, export records, delete records, say changes to records. Uh, this logic is taking you to a number of steps. I will be putting it on the website. There'll be a link on the YouTube channel to the all this logic here that you see on the screen and then the logic to create the database so you can try use it yourself play around with it and see what you can do with it you can expand on it or you might be able to use it for projects you want so thanks for coming i uh, really appreciate the time uh, if you're at this point looking at the video please subscribe um hit the like button and the alerts uh really appreciate if you could share this video with anybody in your field or area you think might like this video and learn from it We'll be working on new videos coming soon. Um, stay tuned. Lots to do in 2021. And again, thanks for coming. Take care. Goodbye.